Good day, everybody. You're listening to the Gimmickast on Sports Direct Radio and the Sports Social Podcast Network. This is now episode two of our new format, and this is called The Preview Show, aptly named because we're going to preview some stuff. So, yes, we're going to do this week in, week out now, where we have a review one point a week and a preview at the next point a week, and basically just split the old pod into two. So if you've not had a chance to go and listen to the review show, where Malaga beat Uday Ibiza 1-0 at La Rosaleda last Sunday, then go back and listen to that. And today, I'm joined by the one and only Luke Chambers as we look ahead to bringing you all the latest news and reviews from La Rosaleda, as well as looking ahead to that match on Sunday against Atletico San Lugueño, which I think is the best Spanish I've ever used, Luke. You yes, certainly you sounded very you sounded very good there, Nick. Very good. <laughs> How are you doing anyway, buddy? Yeah, I'm all good, mate. I've uh, I've kept the British wire industry going at work this morning, headed to the gym. Like we were saying off air, call had a, a nice cafe con leche, shall we say. Let's get in the mood. <laughs> but yeah, it's nice and refreshing, this, isn't it? It's something different. Yeah, exactly. There's only the two of us here this week. There would usually be more, but uh, everyone has got work agendas and trips to make and beaches to sit on. You know, it's all all out there and about. So uh, me and Luke holding down the Good Fort Geary for cast this week. So without further ado, let's get ourselves into some of the latest news coming out here. Luke, you've pro- kindly provided us with a list of news. But the one I wanted to start with, Malaga Club the Football have brought out a brand new range of leisure wear. See, I don't know. What, what are your <laughs> thoughts, Nick, on this? I'm in two minds. One, I'd look cool wearing it. <laughs> two, where would you look cool wearing it though? In England or in Spain? <laughs> I wouldn't look cool wearing it in Blackpool front. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I'd, I'd maybe look cool look it in Spain, but it also has to come into my mind sometimes. Now I'm reaching a certain age in my mid thirties. I don't look anything like Kevin or Danny Lorenzo or any of these young twenty year olds that are sporting around in what is this. Basically, like all white apparel with Malaga CF on the front of it. Like they, they, they look smart, don't they? But like, I don't know. Is is it? Is the club doing too much merch at the minute? As far as the question I'm asking. Look, I, I mean, we all get excited, and like we've had discussions. I'll probably end up buying it eventually, but <laughs> it's like the the purple tracksuit. When you're in Spain in that sunshine, it looks fantastic. It suits everybody. If I walk around Doncaster wearing that thing, I'd get pelters for it. And I know that I would, just like you would in Blackpool. The the new cream or white apparel, I don't know if we're allowed to say brands on here, but it's very, very Primark-y kind of thing. That's <laughs> nothing against Primark, but you know that where you see a jumper, it just says New York across it or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got that vibe to it. The the 1970s retro blue say by the bell jacket. Again, it looks all right. I I don't know if I can pull it off. <laughs> see, I think whenever whenever I'm in Spain, I do see a lot of people, I think they call them, I want to say Leatherman jackets or Letterman jackets, whatever they're called anyway, that like you say, you see the jocks wearing in um in American films. And to be honest, I think that looks quite smart Yeah, on its own. The full white, like essentially tennis outfit, I'm, I'm not too sure. But... It, but you know, it's, it's nice to see um, something new coming out of the club shop from time to time. I know, sure as fuck, that you, Paul, Carl, <laughs> are all going to buy it. Uh, <laughs> Matt will probably get the jacket. Chris will get the jacket. And then... I'll I'll sell it off to his, uh, his team along the Costa. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And I'll wait for it to go in vintage in about two years' time, and I'll get it for a fiver. That's, that's I mean, we've I'll got to it. remember as well, Nick, we are Geary's. It is very. Are we being harsh on the the branding? What they're bringing out? Because, like we say, the Spanish look cool as fucking it. They really do. Yeah, yeah. Us guys over here might not be able to pull it off when it's minus three and stuff like that. <laughs> in the summer, though. In the yeah, summer, that, that, that's when you're coming to your own, sat in the beer garden, everyone's going, Phew, "Look at Luke Chambers in his all white suit. That's <laughs> yeah. good, doesn't it?" 
But uh, <laughs> yeah, so if you haven't seen that, head over to the uh, the Malaga uh, X page or Facebook. They've got some um, very interesting shoots on there with players posing in all sorts of positions. I think uh, one particular player might interest uh, Matt Harrison more than the others. Um, you've brought up average attendances here, Luke, as well. So um, I suppose first to note, last weekend, 26,000. Uh, loyal Malagistas in La Rosaleda um, on a Sunday dinner time. What a blood atmosphere it was. It, it, it was great to be there. But over the course of the season, kind of as we've been doing the last few seasons, we've been ticking up game on game, more and more people attending Malaga matches. And at the minute, we've got an average attendance of just over 22,000, which is just insane, isn't it? It really is. I mean, again, we, we're running out of words of how to talk about this fan base. Again, I think I said it midweek. We need to remember that we're in, we're in the third tier of football. Effectively, that's League One, maybe League Two kind of thing over here. But I was trying to find out, obviously, like you say, we're hitting 22,000 on average. It'd be interesting to see what we was hitting in the La Liga days. Mm. Because like the memorable match, the Malaga Deport, what we posted the other day, there were 13,000 fans at that game. And that were in La Liga. Granted, in the... The Champions League season, I imagine every week we're a sellout. But yeah, like you say, I mean, the, the interesting thing about this is, yes, Depor have an amazing fan base, but Depor aren't in that list what we're in. We're in the top 11, and I believe the only other team outside La Liga is Zaragoza, and we know how well they're supported. I love that. If that's not the natural inclination of a Spurs fan right there, it is being in the top 11. Not the top 10, you're in the Any top trophy. 11. <laughs> Any trophy is a trophy. Top of the top of the second half, shall we say? Yeah, but you but you're right. What you say? Well, to be fair, week in week out as well. You know, depending on where people are playing and and things like that. Malaga regularly appears in the top six of you know most attended fixtures in in Spain, behind the likes of you know um, Real Madrid and uh, you know like I say Athletic Club and and places like that. So it, it, it's it's a massive swell of fans back in the club. And like you say, Luke, we are. Not in La Liga, so there's no more draw than that than other than watching Malaga club to football play against. Uh, right. What we what we've said before, Nick, this season, and obviously Matt will be able to back it up more than anything. I think fans are just enjoying the football again. Yes, we don't want to be where we are, but it's it's just fun. We're winning games. We've had a nightmare for the best part of ten years. This ride is it's I mean, it encourages us to go on our live streams because we're expecting three points. Can I ask you a question? Is it wrong or quite like where we are? Look, right. It's a long time ago, but after the last Geary Cast meetup, I think I said it. Me and Laura are walking around Ben Medina Marina. The sun shines out, planes are taking off, and I'm we're having a bit of an emotional moment in my head, just thinking, how amazing is it that there's there's blokes and girls from all over UK, Europe, etc., coming out for this amazing thing, what, what the Geary Cast can do. But then you're thinking, how amazing has Primera been for us in terms of the fixtures, bringing them fixtures out six months at a time? It allows us all to plan our trips. We, we, we've had several conversations thinking, mm. well, we can go to that one. That one we can't. This one we can. Three months in advance. You know how hard it was in Segunda. You, you wasn't guaranteed three weeks in advance. Never mind. Never mind three months. It, it was really difficult. And like you say, the prices and everything go up and things like that. But it's just like... I don't know. It's just that this there this, this feels a lot more to it. Ironically, you know, La Liga yeah. should be the the big. You need to be there so you could be in there. But if you if you was to ask me, especially compared to Segunda, I'm having more fun this season than I did last season. Naturally, yes, because we're not battling relegation. We're up in a playoff fight. But the teams that are coming across, you know, and again, maybe this is a bit more of a football aficionado. I'd never heard of Alcayano. Before we got in this league, I'd never even uttered the words um, Lenares Deportivo. Um, you know, it, 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 these clubs, though, that, you know, we get to play is very, very interesting. But the fact yeah. that I think Matt will testify, the travelling support's been brilliant as well. So I know we can't spend a long time down here, but whilst no. we are here, I'm going to fucking enjoy it. Yeah, it's fun. it's fun. It's interesting. We're learning new things. You know yourself going in Segunda. We were going away to teams where, you know, it's we, we'd be happy with a shit out of a 0-0 performance or something. 
these games, we're, we're, we're excited for every away game. Mm. It's just like, but then again, going back to the conversation me and me and my wife are having, it's very much like, look, we come on this stream every week. We want to see Malaga win. We want to talk about Malaga win. However, do we want to get promoted? <laughs> yes. And if we get in that playoffs and lose, we'll be devastated. Yeah. Then you're like, oh, we get Premier again. We get five months in advance <laughs> of fixtures. Let's get the aeroplanes booked. Yeah, maybe that's what uh, Depot fans have been doing for a long time. They're thinking, actually, it's not that bad down here. Let's make it They've look like we're doing. They've had a good ride. ride. <laughs> uh, they have. For well, speaking uh, of, uh, I don't know how to make this jump. Good rides. Uh, <laughs> let's jump over to uh, people who ride challenges and some injury updates for this week. So, uh, Luke, you've compiled a, a list here for me of um, injury updates. So, uh, we've currently got on the treatment table Juanpe, uh, Manu Molina, Roberto and Ramon. Is that right? Yeah, so nothing's too clear, to be honest. I mean, we report, we well, we, we kind of report the other day that Juanpe was had a minor injury. Manu Molina were waiting for scan results. But interestingly, yesterday we saw David Picon put that Juanpe, Manu Molina and Roberto have actually taken part in training. It does say light training. So three days ahead of a game, I don't know if that means they're available for weekend. I don't really think. I mean, what Malaga seems to have done recently is as soon as a player is back in training, they, they do put them on the bench, mm. but with no real view of putting them on. The interesting one is that I've not seen a thing about Ramon this week, mm. whereas last week it was mentioned about Ramon being in training twice. We've been here before where we get slightly excited that Ramon's walking again or is jogging again and then it vanishes and then it comes walking out again. <laughs> Ramon's abduct or bloody whatever they mean in Spanish I don't know but someone's popped again and we ain't going to see Ramon so fingers crossed no news is good news on Ramon but yeah hopefully Wampe Manu or Roberto have a good couple of days and I don't know maybe the bench yeah I think the fun with Ramon now is just sort of like it's not a uh, 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 and if it's just a when, isn't it? And I think it it's is. things like if Ramon catches his reflection in a mirror, he, he could possibly get injured. It's become a bit of a rolling joke. Um, the one that concerns me massively, as you will know, Luke, is Mano Molina, because yeah. not only am I a huge Mano Molina fan, but I think um, Malaga's form as of late um, is linked to his performances, and he's been excellent in pretty much every single game since the turn of the year. Um, when he came off against Ibiza, I was concerned. You texted me saying that um, he looked, you know, quite devastated. He looked in pain. Um, but it transpires he's not going to be out for too long, is it? It's probably not as worse feared, is it? How important it is for Malaga to get him back on the pitch as quick as we can, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like you know better than anybody, I had my initial views on Manu which, in all fairness, quickly changed. And like you say, he's the, the player in the centre midfield what does keep the ball ticking. Mentioned before, Hanaro does the doggy work. He'll win the ball back, etc. And Manu really... I mean, I saw it versus uh, Atletico Balleres. He really does have an eye to play. He loves to spring the ball out wide, etc. If we've got a strong two in our midfield, we're a much better team. If you take a Manu out, I don't know. We haven't seen much of Sink Sangali, but I don't think players like that bring what Manu actually does bring to this team. No, we'll, and we'll come on to starting 11s later, but I was really struggling to think of who could step up to uh, replace Manu Molina against uh, Atletico Salqueño this weekend. So, without further ado, let's move on to speak about our opposition on Sunday. It is an away day, one that Mr Matt Harrison is travelling to. Um, so if you're not too far, too aware of where San Luqueño is, I believe it's just north of Kadi. Um, very nice little part of the world. If you get to look at some pictures of the actual town itself, there's not a lot going on, but it's got a beautiful beach area. So it's uh, a place probably definitely uh, worth visiting. Luke, you were there at the reverse fixture at La Rosaleda in December time. Um, San Luqueño came and got a draw I think it was nil nil yeah I'll be perfectly honest Nick I dare say this was the most boring game I've been to in my life you know the frustrating Malaga what turn up where 
I don't know, possession might have been 85%, 15 but nothing happens. Side to side, side to side. It didn't ruin a good trip to the Costa del Sol. We all know it doesn't matter what happens for that 90 minutes. It, it never ruins the trip. But it was just as the nights were starting to get cold, etc. And it, it really had a feel of, why do we do this? <laughs> <laughs> what am I but, doing here? <laughs> yeah, but um, I mean, San Luquenio went down to 10 men late on. You kind of get the excitement that Malaga is going to push on, but it never came. It was in the middle of the unbeaten spell. No, actually, sorry, we're after the Alcayano game. So mm. Malaga was struggling a bit at home. It's when when we were sticky at uh, La Rosaleda. But, I mean, based on that night, I know a lot of teams come to La Rosaleda and sit, and San Luqueño definitely did that, and they definitely frustrated Malaga that night. Uh, I think you're right. I think on paper that we, we would, again, maybe this with this kind of like... I don't want to say air of superiority, but you'd look at fixtures like, uh, you know, Atletico San Luqueño, um, and you'd go, oh, they're, they're, they're there for the taking. You know, that's a team we can beat quite easily. Um, but teams like that will frustrate you, and they certainly frustrated us at La Rosa Leda, not just because we were poor and they were poor, but they just stifled teams. Um, and I think that's been kind of the story of their season, haven't they? They've... Yeah. They're not doing too badly, like I say, 12th in the league, pretty much halfway um, point. Probably very happy with where they are right there. Um, seven games unbeaten at the minute. So, again, picking up a bit of form. They're probably maybe a bit of a stretch away from the playoffs, Luke. But, you yeah. know, they'll be buzzing with this, won't they? Massively, massively. I mean, um, I don't think it's quite a derby, but anything on the, the Andalus coast, fans will be well up for it. But, yeah, I was really surprised when I were obviously doing a bit of research before the pod and found out that there was seven games unbeaten. I, I know that they had a, a very big relegation battle win uh, two weeks ago against Merida. But yeah, the, the, these are a team to be messed with. And I mean, again, maybe a touch of arrogance, but I was very much looking into this game thinking, yeah, it's, we should do this. It's three points. We'll be very disappointed not to, but these are a team what are on form. Yeah, I think as well. I was reading. I, I don't know if it's their home form or whether it's just their games in general. But I think it's something like they'd only lost twice, either at home or in the last thirteen games. Three, three, three is it? Right. Yeah, so three, so yeah. again, difficult to beat this this side. And you know they are they they they're no slouches. Um, they one thing I always think, Nick, interestingly, very much like Malaga at home. These have not conceded a goal in three games. They've scored. Well, they played uh, played twenty six, scored twenty nine, and conceded twenty seven. So there isn't many teams in this league will have a plus goal difference other than the. I don't know. Do we go all Premier League and say the top six or whatever like that, or the big six? Yeah, it's um, it's one of them where, like you say, they'll they'll definitely set up to frustrate us at, at home, but they'll look at it as a bit of a scalp as well. Yeah. Also, have got one of the nicest stadiums on the uh, in this league as well. It's not all singing, all dancing. Don't get me wrong, but very, very pleasant to the eye. Lovely floodlights, very yeah. symmetrical all the way around with four sides and things like that. And as well, Luke, you know I'm a kit man, and we've not really gone too much into kits this season. And I'll make two observations. One, the home kit is fucking beautiful in terms of the stripes and the banner that goes yeah. across the top of it. However, and it's a big however, is this in the running for the worst club badge that we've ever seen in Spain? Yes, I would say so. Well, we'll start with number one. The kit is a very nice kit. It, it's a fresh green and white kit. The badge, I don't know, it's quite weird. It's like a bit of a garden, you know, like a, a cheap garden, a bit of something what you'd hang on your wall maybe or something. <laughs> It's very bog standard. I mean, if you had a team called Atletico San Luqueño and you, your badge is AS. Yeah, yeah. Somebody in design's not really <laughs> making the money, I don't think. It, it reminds me a lot of, you know, when um, you'll, you'll see this a lot, especially with your previous football career, but when people set up new Sunday League teams and it's all like, yeah, we're fucking Cholton Rangers and we've got this... Charlton Rangers bag, or we are fucking, you know, Wickham 
Dynamo, and here's a big WD badge. It's got all the semblance of a I've been made on paint by some yeah. guy who's just set up a Sunday League team. So it's a template. It's such a it? shame. It's, it's definitely a template. A shame. It's a template, and it does it, it. definitely brings the kit down slightly. Like you said a minute ago, though, Nick, the the ground. Oh, it's a beauty. In term from coming from a well, somebody. We, I mean, we all like stadiums. We're all ground hoppers in a way. Matt Harrison definitely is a ground hopper, and Matt will love this ground. It's definitely up his street. You mentioned about the floodlights. It apparently holds five thousand fans on on a on a good day, I believe, and I don't think it's going to be far off the capacity on Sunday at the Estadio El Palmar. Yeah, I think um, it reminds me a bit of um, El Mauli, home of uh, Antiquera, maybe yeah. with less trees. Yeah, um, <laughs> that, that's not necessarily. There might be a tree. Uh, there there may be a tree. <laughs> we we will see if there's a tree. We'll have to report if there is a tree. Um, Sandra Konyov, we said as well, they're no slouches. They've got some, you know, pretty decent footballers in there. The one that jumped out the page to me um, straight away is former um, Ibiza man, Koke. Um, oh. he, he is someone who is a, let's say, experienced player for this level. He's uh, fucking ancient now. Um, but they've also got some quite young lads as well. Um, one lad who was pointed out to us in Malaga Gaga a few months ago was... Um, Mwepu, the brother of the um, the lad who was at Brighton, yeah, well, um, yeah. who had to quit football because he had, I think, a heart arrhythmia or something like that. He's a pretty canny striker, isn't he, Luke? Yeah, he is definitely. I mean, the the game in I'm thinking it was the beginning of November when we played him. He, I'm sure, he was the top goal scorer in the league at that point. He's on loan from Cadiz. He's a big lad, pacey. He's actually only he, now he's got seven goals in 18 games, which sounds okay, but like I say, I'm sure. Those seven came in the first, I don't know, eight, nine games. He hasn't scored in 10. And that particular night, Murillo had a great game. Really, really kept him mm. quiet. But again, this this guy on his day, can be he can be a very, very difficult player to play against. So our defence will have to be on form and look after him. Yeah, I think so. I remember you saying he was on loan from uh, Kiddi as well, which when you are, you, you don't get signed by a La Liga club. Um, you know, I'm not saying Kiddi are the, biggest club in the world that they're, they're not but you don't get to that level without having a bit of nouse about you so he's definitely someone for us to, uh, to exactly. keep uh, exactly and an eye on. by the sounds of recent weeks a new name is Nacho Ramon so this guy plays up front I think he plays up front with Mwepu I think the players are two but he's got six goals in his last 16 which yes isn't amazing but for a team who's been languishing down near the bottom mm. it's it's one in three he has scored three in his last four games, I believe, as well. Yeah, to have two strikers as well that are approaching double figures at this point in the season is not a, a, a bad sign no. of a bad side either. At what point do we start just thinking that we are dealing with football manager regens? Because the name Nacho Ramon is that is exactly what football manager regen would give to a Spanish name. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Na Nacho Ramon, that can be the, his name. <laughs> Just every week there is at least one that presents themselves as well. Oh, 100%. And interestingly, say football manager there, Nick. So yeah, I've got also got another name, Zacharias Highland. So this guy, I'm thinking, where do I know this name from? Where do I know this name from? So he came through the Barcelona ranks and he was very, very highly thought of. Like a lot of the young Barcelona players who don't quite make it, they tend to vanish quickly. It's mm. as if you've gone sky high. They'll get a decent move, that won't work, then another move, and then before you know it, they find they put themselves languishing in Primera. So Highland very much is their star boy. However, he's very, very injury prone. So he's only played 10, 10 games this season. He scored two goals in those 10 games, and he's a winger. He could play on either side. So again, he could be very tricky. But I, like we say regular, I believe that our Fullbacks, wingbacks, whatever you want to call them, we're very strong in that in that department. Can't remember too many wingers other than the boy at Cordoba, with Lauren, who gave uh, a very good time on that. Antiquera, sorry, yeah. yeah, yeah. Besides that, I think we do deal with wide players very well. I think Lauren got a move as well, if I remember rightly. Um, oh, it's gonna bug me now, yes, but I'm pretty sure. Unfortunately, to Real Murcia, that was the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, could be, that could have been us. It should have been us. 
we were tapping. It should have been me uh, type of thing, but he was definitely one who impressed. Well, speaking of our fullbacks, um, so another section of this sort of like news and preview shows, we're going to start bringing you our uh, predicted or wish list starting um, 11s. Um, so for the audio medium, we'll describe them, we'll read them out for you and things like that, which I'm going to choose. For the visual medium, if you're watching us on YouTube, now this is special. Oh, oh, wow. Look at this. We, we now have slides within slides here, and me and Luke have been moved off to the left-hand side to make way for this wonderful football pitch we see in front of us. So, um... Nick, this really looks. This this looks. We need this. We need more of this. <laughs> this is good. I like this. This, I like should be, this should be on the live stream. We should just put slides in that change all the time. Um, so I think just looking at it here, Luke, it's brought up yours first. I don't know if you want to give us a read from front to back. Yeah. So very much, I've gone for. A similar lineup to what we've had recently. I've got Herrero in the goal, the back four of Hockey, Monte, Einar, and Victor. The two in midfield, Hernaro, and the only player coming into the team, assuming Manu Molina isn't fit. I've gone very Chris Marquez and I've chucked Musa in there. I think Musa, you see him regularly carrying the ball out of defense. Like we've compared it, we compare a lot of Malaga players to, to good players, but like a Yaya Torre esque kind of thing, power, pace. I think Moussa yeah. did a very good job inside there. Besides Moussa, we've got David Ferreiro, who I think has been fantastic. Danny Lorenzo, again, upped his game. Kevin definitely deserves to start. And the single player up front, again, is Dione. Yeah, I think, to be fair, this is a team that sort of picks itself. Obviously, not too dissimilar from the one that started against Ibiza as well. Moussa being the only person coming in. And as you mentioned, um, just because Manu Molina is out injured. I think if he was available, he'd be yeah. straight in there. There's, there's a lot of conversation about this with Moussa at the minute. This, you, 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 there's been a few people that have described Moussa have been able to be not just a centre-back, but also kind of like a, a CDM, an extra pair of legs in there. You, you mentioned Yaya Torre, but maybe to the uh, to make it more relevant to Malaga, kind of like a prime Alfred Ndai yeah. role. Um, yeah. Do you think it's something he can definitely do, though? Or do you think it's just a bit wishful thinking? It's something I'd like to have a look at. I'm not saying it's going to work. I think it could work, definitely. But we know how strong we are at centre-half. Effectively, we've got five other good centre-halves. I mean, we, we're all raving about Murillo early in the season. Where's mm. Murillo these days? He's not played in the last 10, I don't think. So it's very difficult to break into that the centre-half mould. And even, even Pelissaire said it himself. Moose has been very unfortunate to not get the game time. Regarding our midfielders, besides Manu Molina playing alongside Genaro, there's not really any midfielder who's took the, the ball by the horns. Sangale, I, pro I think Sangale probably will start this game if fit. Mm. I think it'll be a safe option. Um, Isan Moreno, another, another good choice. But I, I don't know, I, I just... I think this is something different what Spanish football hasn't, well, at our level hasn't got. A real a unit in midfield. No, well, I'll move on to my start level, which is not too dissimilar to yours at all, Luke. I think we'd be daft to think we could change. I don't change think you can. Yeah, you can't after the Ibiza performance. There's not, don't get me wrong, Nick, there will be times where we will change <laughs> a good six yeah, yeah, or seven yeah. of our team. <laughs> They're just a working forward at the minute. So I've gone with Don Alfonso Herrero in goal, uh, back four of Hawking, Monte, Aino and Victor, uh, Hanaro in midfield. Uh, alongside him, though, I've dropped, and again, I, I, I haven't enjoyed doing this, by the way, but I've pulled Lorenzo into alongside uh, Hanaro, and I've gone with Lorubia as the 10 to sort of play in behind Dioni now. In the Ibiza game, Lorenzo is essentially a second striker to me, and he played so, so well. He was absolutely excellent, and he's been excellent since the turn of Christmas, really. But it's like you said before, Luke, there is just isn't anyone in there that I would trust more to go and replace Manu Molina. Fompi's yeah. obviously might be injured, but I don't think he is that kind of player. Sangali, I did like him at the start of the season, but again, I don't think he offers you the same thing. There's, there's that lack of vision from him. Marino the same, and, and and so on. So I kind of got to ask myself, well, what's the lesser of two evils here? Do I play Sangali alongside Gennaro and then have Danny Lorenzo playing in his role? Or do I pick a player who I think is stronger on the pitch and who's looking to perform better 
yeah. and that would be La Rubia and playing off Kevin on the left, Ferrero on the right, and Dione up top. Yeah. I just think he could maybe have a bit more of an impact. See, it's a very interesting team, this one, Nick, because like you mentioned earlier, it's obviously a new feature what we brought in, and I think it's it's a brilliant feature. It would have been very bland this first week because your team is the exact team what I was thinking. <laughs> I was going to drop, well, not drop, I was going to move Danny Lorenzo backslide. I think La Rubia is ready for a start after the Ibiza game. This may be, a, this might be the hole for him to come into. Besides mm. that, like we just mentioned, we can't change too much to that Ibiza team, surely, and I don't think he will. No, I think the only other thing that came into my mind in, in in when I was trying to get into my tap into my inner pace there, um, whether he go back to three centre backs, yeah, exactly the same. Um, knowing exactly that you know, they've got two pretty canny strikers available to them, whether he might put like a Musa or a Juan De or even a Mario, like I say, I think the if we were doing a podcast title for this one, I would definitely call it Don Diesta Mario. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, so I think the only thing what swayed me from that was Nick after Kevin's performance last week in a 3 5 2 5 3 2, whatever you want to call it, is there a place for a Kevin? I think he can play closer to the only as a central, but after mm. his performance last week, do we want to move him too much? I, I don't know. Again, it's, this is just our views. Pelissaire obviously may do the three. I, I were very close to putting the three at the back again. Yeah, I think it'd be interesting to see um, what does come of it. And we'll we'll be able to reveal more to you on uh, Sunday afternoon once uh, Sergio Pace uh, does decide his starting 11. And if in the meantime, maybe we'll put a template up on Twitter on or on or on X, as it's called now, on Instagram. You can let us know what your starting 11 would be, potentially. You just write over the positions and go from there. Um, so just to quickly look around before we finish off, Luke, is this weekend's fixtures as well. There's some really big games in the Primera RFEF this weekend. So most notably, we'll always look towards the likes of Castellon and Ibiza as we hunt them down. Ibiza at home on Sunday to Aldeceras. Um, Ibiza well out of form as well, aren't yeah, they, Luke? really are. The Something's not right at Ibiza at the moment, it seems. We had our sticky patch. Hopefully, their sticky patch goes on a hell of a lot longer. But also, Al Al I can't say that word. But <laughs> <laughs> they're chasing Al players. Al yeah. Al <laughs> they're just outside the playoffs. Um, do Ibiza want to be playing that kind of team whilst in this form? I don't think so. Again, if they can take points off a of beef and we can win this is starting to pull pull a beef well back to us yeah no absolutely i think like say we're only is it four points behind the beef now um yeah. off the top of my head uh and obviously a, a big nine points still behind um castellon who through the touch of and graces of god last weekend got a win in the 85th minute through an own goal um i think whether well, they were the old Against Marida or someone like yeah, that. At home. Yeah, yeah at home. Home. I mean, the, the, the personally, I think that this kind of this kind of uh, result wins leagues because they've been in a a very sticky patch for themselves. I mean, again, they're they're the best team in this league, but they've only won once in the last four. I think it was before that. If you yeah. get a three points from an eighty fifth minute, the the heads are going to be high. Albeit Alcayana away can be. I think this will be a very tricky game. Malaga. Went there and won convincingly. However, we were playing against ten men for seventy minutes, and Alcayano yeah. still had a good goal. The form cast on. They're not. They're not hammering teams at the moment. No, they seem to have um, dipped away a little bit. It, it just definitely appears to be met Malaga and the other team that are massively in for the minute is Cordoba, really? um, who they're at home at eleven o'clock or, or midday in Spain um, against. Midday merchants, as we want to call them from now on, Atletico Balleras, who've got every single fucking home game at 12 o'clock. Um, again, they're not in massive great form, so shouldn't cause too much trouble for Cordova, should they? No, I can try and dig deep and talk some dribble here, but I've got a home win down. They're, they're, I believe Cordova are the most informed team in the league, getting stronger and stronger. And I didn't know, but interestingly, Matt said that Cordova were roughly 10 points clear this time last year. And somehow, mm. when I'm a Tottenham fan, very Spursy, bottled <laughs> it and chucked it away. Um, but yeah, Cordoba for me are very much one of the best teams in this league. 
No, they are. Like you say, it's becoming a bit of a, a three-horse race to see if anybody can catch Castellan. Just to round up the rest of the games in Primera, RFEF Grupo 2 this weekend. There's only one match on Saturday. That is between Real Madrid Castilla taking on Antiquera at home. And then on Sunday, we've got Intercity versus Uday Melilla. Uh, as we mentioned, Ibiza against Algeciras, Cordoba against Atletico Baleares, Recitiva Granada host ID Ceuta. Uh, Lenares Deportivo against Real Murcia, Salagueño against Malaga, Alqueano against Castellón, Recreativo Huelva at home to Atletico Bay, uh, San Fernando against Merida is the last kickoff on Sunday evening as Nick. well. So plenty of football. Bien hablo español, amigo. Bien. Sí, sí, sí. gracias. <laughs> <laughs> Can read them fine. Ask me Very to go to a restaurant. Fucking no chance. <laughs> I used to be able to say I'll just say that's no problems at all. And now I'm just my head goes. <laughs> yeah. I just go, yeah, me can still una cerveza part of English yeah. menu. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. Hamburger, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um but yes, plenty of good football this weekend, and we hope once again that Malikan can come away with massive tres puntos from the Kidi coastline and hopefully results elsewhere go our way. So, as I said before, if you've not listened to the podcast from earlier this week, reviewing the game against Ibiza, go and listen to it. It was a great episode uh, full of insight and analysis and great stories from our time there last weekend. This has been the preview show. Thank you very much, Luke, for joining me. Thank you very much, mate. Uh, I hope you've all enjoyed it. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it, Nick. It's been a bit something different, a bit more in depth about the team. Letting out, I mean, eventually we are in Primera. Not everybody knows everything about these guys. We don't know everything until we research. So, yeah, I've enjoyed it. New feature. Yeah. It's good sometimes as well because by the time you get an hour and a half in and you're just like, oh, well, don't know much about this. We've, yeah. we've actually put some effort into this one, haven't we, Luke? So. And we've, got, we've talked about mountains and cars and ex yeah. Malaga players and football kits and the, the sunshine. <laughs> we go a yeah, bit off exactly. the field, but yeah. Thank you very much, Nick. Um, very much looking forward to this one. I think it's going to be a great game. I really do think it's got potential. But um, hope you all have a great weekend. Vamos Malaga. Vamos Malaga, indeed. It is worth mentioning as well. It is, at moment at this moment in time, unlikely we will have a live stream. Never say never. But mainly because in the UK, if you're a UK listener, you'll know it's Mother's Day. And it's just not worth the wrath of my wife <laughs> for me to spend Mother's Day watching Malaga Club de Football a week after I was in Malaga on my own <laughs> to watch Malaga Club de Football. So we're playing it smart, gents. Let's do the right thing. But if there is any change to that, we shall let you know. So you've been listening to the Cast on Sports Direct Radio and as part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. Thank you very much for listening. Adios. Mm-hmm. Vamos, Malaga. Oh,